G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews and in particular the Zod Nano Talon Evo and the problems with the elevator. Now a lot of feedback, a lot of comments, a lot of people said no you didn't get a Friday afternoon special, mine's like that too. So it's an engineering problem, it's a design problem, it's an implementation problem and I, I I'm an engineer at heart and I love to take things that don't work and make them work. So I'm going to analyze this problem with the tail feathers, see if we can't work out how to fix it simply, easily and without too much effort. So um, as we know the elevators don't move here when the servos move and one astute view viewer put in the comments he thinks it's the push rods bending and you know what I agree with him because there are just simple wire push rods between these servos and the arms on the torque rods down here and I mentioned I think I mentioned in the review that let's take one of these out that these are awfully stiff and I you know I said it's because the foam perhaps here is too thick and I think that's the problem because I can barely move those with my fingers on those tiny little torque rods so what I think is happening is um, the when the push rod pushes to make the elevator go up um, all is fine. When it pulls, what's happening is it's actually preloaded at the moment. I think the push rod has got a bit of bend in it. So when you push, all the bend's been taken out and the elevator goes up. When you pull, all it does is unbend the push rod so the elevators don't move. So it strikes me that the easiest way to fix this is going to be to make the elevators easier to move. And we've got all this hinge line here of quite thick foam. So I'm going to I'm going to use a bit of English or London street justice, get my knife, and I'm going to cut out some of the hinge. Uh, and I just in places so that will make it easier and I've done this on other models in the past actually to make it easier for the model or for the hinge to move um, I can't remember which models I've done this on but I have done it on other models because sometimes the foam is just too much of a burden for the servo so whoops I'm out of shot let me do that again so I'm just going to cut in here through the foam it's already feeling a little bit easier got to be careful not to cut too much of course that's feeling a bit better um, I'll do the rest of it off camera but yeah that, that's that's feeling a bit easier to move now so I have a feeling that even with that little bit of mod there just cutting through the foam we're going to see a bit more action on those elevators but not yet so I'll do a jump cut here because I'll do the job properly I think we've got a bit of success here now if I move my elevator whoops that's the motor I keep forgetting what mode I'm on look at this now look at the the this elevator is now moving while the other one isn't because I've freed up the hinge line so the push rod is no longer bowing so I've got up and down up and down here and I'll just I'll reposition the camera so you can see what I'm talking about here we go now I'm going to go up and down you can see with down there is more movement on the right hand than the left hand and I think I could free up that hinge even more it's still not totally free I'm going to spend a bit more time working on that but you can see we're getting more movement out of that that right hand elevon now than out of the left one because I've freed up the hinge line I'll carry on what I may end up having to do is actually just completely cut the hinge line right out and put some decent pinned hinges and that will probably solve the problem because it's a whole lot simpler than actually mounting servos on these and then running extension wires all the way back so um, we'll do another jump cut I'll just carry on with this process okay I've just given it a little bit more taken a bit more out of the hinge line and yeah I, th I think this is showing a great deal of promise I may have to adjust the linkages now because obviously there's not so much preload on those push rods so this has actually got a bit of up on it so I'll adjust the linkage so it's got a little bit of down on it and we'll see how that goes okay so the right hand elevator now I've set it back to neutral by adjusting it on the servo and when we go up here we get a bit of a look at it um, you'll probably see that it's now working fine I've got movement either side of neutral with only let me see if I can get the stick into shot with only a small amount of stick movement now we're actually getting the movement we want out of the elevator so that was the problem the problem was that these things are just so stiff the hinges are so thick and so stiff that it's causing the push rods to bow under compression so when when the servo is trying to push the push rod to move this torque rod here the, 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 the push rod is actually bowing it's actually bending and that's causing the problem so the reason I had no down elevator was I was preloading the push rod to get the bend in there so I could get some up elevator but that meant when I tried to give down elevator the push rod wasn't pulling it was just unbending from its bowed state so I have fixed I think I fixed this now I'll, I'll fly it of course I can't fly it today unfortunately because the airfield is closed and also it's windy and blowing a gale again outside I'm getting quite annoyed with this summer by this time last year I'd had dozens of um, wonderful flights with the DLG I think I've had three flights so far this November because the wind has been persistent and 
and never ending. So yeah, but um, that certainly seems to have made a huge difference. I mean, compare. Look at the right hand one to the left hand one. We've, we've certainly, I think we've solved that problem. So Zod, um, if you're watching, which I hope you are, um, you need to look at the hinge line on this thing. Just change the hinge line, even if it is doing what I've done. You can probably see, I'll take this out, you can see what I've done here. Hopefully, you can see I've put holes, I've cut through the actual hinge material here. There's plenty of meat left to hold the elevator on, it's not a high stress component. So I have simply cut holes so that there's, there's not a great big long hinge. There's a little bit of hinge there, there's a little bit there, there's a little bit there, there's a little bit back here. So by doing that, I have effectively, should I just go up a bit so we can get against the green background? You can probably see I haven't done a very neat job of it, but by doing that, I've significantly made the hinge or made this tail surface easier to move so the servo isn't bowing the pushrod. Simple solutions to complex problems. Now, as for the aileron issue, I'm going to apply some more thought to that as well. We do have a lot of flex in the pushrod in, in the torque tube for that, and it is a much easier one to just move the servos out into the wing if that's what you want to do. So interim solution would be move the servos to the wing, put in a horn and a pushrod. That'll solve that problem totally, but um, it means you will have to find another servo because there is only one aileron servo in the standard setup. So you have to buy another servo or buy another two servos so they're matched and do that. So yeah, that's a bit of farting around. Uh, the, to be honest, the aileron issue isn't as big as the elevator issue. You won't crash because of the aileron issue. As you saw, I had a building because of the elevator issue. Um, but that's solved now. So um, I'm going to fly it again. I'm not going to touch the ailerons. I'm going to update the, you know, change the hinges on this other thing as well. So I've got elevator. I'm going to fly it manually without the flight controller. And I'll just tell you what I think of the change, whether it's, you know, made the model any better to fly, which I'm sure it will do. But hey, you have to wait for that video because of the damn weather. In the meantime, um, some more feedback. Tell me what you think on this. And I wish manufacturers, I mean, manufacturers making this stuff. I've been doing this for 50, over, over 50 years. If any manufacturers out there and they want me to preview a model, and have a look at it and see if I can come up with better solutions to problems because I end up doing it all the time. But um, if they want me to preview models before they unleash them on the market, then hey, contact me. Details are in the description of this video, how to get hold of me. Um, and we, I'm happy to work with any manufacturer that wants to work with me. And uh, I'm not going to charge anybody. This is for the benefit of the hobby. I'd much rather see that people get better products that give them a better experience out of the box, rather than something like this where it, it arrives in a situation where it's not going to fly very well and people are going to have to modify it themselves. Much better to get these mods sorted before the product ships. And this would be such a simple mod to do at the factory level. Really, really simple. Um, even change the molds so that there's a push through on those uh, horn hinges or make them thinner or whatever. So yeah, there you go. Now, as I say, comments to the commenty place, criticisms to the commenty place because I love to hear what I'm doing wrong so I can make my videos better. And this has just been a short one. Hopefully, if you've got one of these, you'll be able to do this mod and enjoy flying it a whole lot better. There you go. Thanks for watching. Thank you to my Patreon supporters who make all this possible. Bye for now.